There's been quite a bit of activity in the Mercedes-Benz Hypar charging network. Let's go ahead and get into what's new. First off, I don't know if people saw the news reports, but Mercedes-Benz Global announced that they are ceasing selling electric vehicles in the United States. Now, when I heard that, I was concerned that meant perhaps also the Mercedes-Benz high-powered charging network in the United States was going to be paused or maybe ceased operations until a later time and staff being let go and um, not really sure what to expect, but I posted it on LinkedIn and Sebastian actually works for Mercedes-Benz high powered charging and he chimed in saying, no, that's not correct. And subsequent news release concerning the pausing of electric vehicles by Mercedes-Benz in North America was indicating that upcoming models were going to be released. So basically just the EQ line of Mercedes-Benz uh, vehicles were going to be like Gen 1 electric vehicles is another way of saying it. My sister-in-law owned one and it was an EQB and she was not too fond of it because every day she had to travel a good amount of miles and although Mercedes is generally known for being a reliable vehicle, the range was really an issue for her. So they traded it in for a R1S and that for her has really been fitting the bill instead. So I think it's generally agreed that the Gen 1 EQ uh, Mercedes needed a little bit more uh, revisiting. And what Mercedes has done is they're um, uplifting their entire electric vehicle portfolio. And during that time, North America is not getting electric vehicles, but it's not like they're ceasing the sale of electric vehicles globally, nor are they going to abandon the North American market with electric vehicles. Um, so they already have 2000 ports in development, according to Sebastian with Federal Realty, the press release that I'm going to get to here in just a second. So. By all accounts, the Mercedes-Benz hyper charging network is unaffected from Mercedes-Benz's global decision to cease selling electric vehicles in North America temporarily. This is the press release of which I'm referring to concerning Federal Realty, and I will link it down below in the description. It's a nationwide portfolio, and I went over some of these locations right here at Camelback Colonnade in Phoenix is a shopping center. When you pull it up, it's not like a premium shopping center. It's just a shopping center, but apparently they've been able to find success, long-term success in shopping center operations, which is really saying something because with the whole uh, buying online, Mercedes, uh, I'm sorry, um, shopping centers have started to suffer a little bit of blight, especially the larger ones, but uh, federal real he apparently has found a path to sustainable success in um, operating strip malls. Basically, uh, the strip malls, not the full larger malls. These are uh, more like strip malls, and sometimes they're multi-building campuses, things like that. So it's a good place to have Mercedes-Benz chargers because oftentimes I find Mercedes-Benz charging is not really designed in order to help with road trips those are really where the bucky's locations come in it seems like their newer builds are more geared for urban charging and um, those high traffic strip malls and anchor malls tend to be places where people frequent and i find that those stations are pretty heavily used uh, at least that's been my experience i was just at one this weekend in sandy springs georgia a good deal off the interstate you have to drive probably about two miles off the interstate in order to get to it and um uh it, seemed, it was still very heavily used. I was there late into the night and there were still cars coming and going. And, and my apologies, let me go back here. First location is, is expected to go live in 2026. So there's no um, stations currently with this federal realty, uh, nor do we have any indication that any are currently under construction, but it looks like they do have permitting processing going, but I have not seen any indication of any of these under construction yet. Total of 500 stalls are expected to go into these locations. Now, I'd like a little bit of viewer input here because if you go to plug share, you could select Mercedes Benz, and this is what you see both coming soon and open stations. Um, these coming soon locations are actually put in by Mercedes-Benz because as a member of the public, I cannot select Mercedes-Benz in order to add a station. They're all controlled by Mercedes-Benz. So they do seem to be going through and adding stations as they commence construction. 
so they update their internal map and they also update plug share. Now, Mercedes-Benz high-powered charging, as I'm going to get to here in a second, we just saw the last press release, plus the efforts previous with Bucky's and some of the uh, native properties that they built into, that they're growing. This is becoming a larger and larger network, and by all accounts, the uh, pace of growth is getting ready to increase rather significantly. And I've been debating about how to track them in a graphical way. Uh, with Pilot Flying J, initially I just had it in a word table, basically, initially when it was just a couple dozen. And then I put it into a database, and then I created maps, and then I was using hybrid maps come from some press releases, and I was doing some things like that. With IANA, I started off with a database because by all accounts, their plans are to go big, and so I wanted to be ready to go from the get-go. And at British Petroleum, uh, BP Pulse, I also have a database in order to do certain queries because that one's a little bit more complicated because you have Giga Hubs, and then you also have Travel Centers of America, and then they also have their BP gas station brands, but I'm not tracking those. So in order to parse out, and I don't have a clean map, I had to basically go on my own and create my own map for them. But for Mercedes-Benz, I don't really have an answer yet, but I'm going to have to come up with something if I'm going to continue to track this. I'm planning on it because I think this is going to be a major network, and their pace of growth is getting ready to dramatically increase. So if anyone has any suggestions, and again, I'm just kind of noodling on this for a couple more weeks, what I'm going to end up doing. But if anyone has some suggestions about what to do in order to track this uh, better, and I'm halfway leaning towards just leaving the plug share map as my primary source because it seems to be reflective. Now, the location in Phoenix, Arizona is not on this map. Someone in PlugShare did add it and linked the press release, so we know it's coming soon, but Mercedes-Benz hasn't put it in here. So that's a location that we know is coming, but it's not on this map. So I should probably track that somehow, and I don't really know if I should track it separately in just kind of a small ancillary table of some kind or add it to a map. I don't think I should add it to a map. And Again, these are all the ones that are open and under construction, and this is maintained by Mercedes-Benz. So your thoughts and opinions are appreciated there. This is from the Alternative Fuels Data Center database. Recently, they moved everything over from ChargePoint to a new CPO called Mercedes-Benz. Uh, so now we have that in order to make searching in the Alternative Fuels Data Center database much easier. If you want to try it yourself, it downloads as a CSV, which opens in Excel or whatever spreadsheet application you like, and then you just sort EV network on Mercedes-Benz and you'll get the same list that I do. I personally like my, uh, you know, uh, SQL, the Database Structured Query Language, in order to do this a little bit better, but uh, you can choose as you wish. And this is every station open, sorted by the open date. And you can see Norfolk, Virginia was the last one that opened with 10 stalls. Also, if you want to see all the ones in Bucky's, Bucky's allows you to sort their locations by locations that have Mercedes-Benz high-powered charging, which is awfully convenient of them, very neighborly. Okay, so this is what I was talking about with the spike in activity. We now have our first of these Starbucks locations under construction in Red Bluff, California, which would be probably this one up here, this little Mercedes icon on the cup up there. <clears throat> so more than 100 Starbucks stores across the country, and they're eventually going to go uh, markets on the East Coast as well. So assumably the Interstate 95 corridor. So 100 locations coming there. So there's the Federal Realty. There's the Starbucks. Um, there is Simon Mall properties. Uh, there's the Bucky's properties and a few others that are uh, really starting to indicate that the amount of stations that Mercedes-Benz is going to be installing is getting ready to see a significant increase. 
So all these things combined has got me trying to figure out what I'm going to do about this because it was nice when they were just kind of a small CPO, kind of like a boutique one that had a couple of nice stations, but now, now they're becoming a major source of electric vehicle infrastructure. And you can see the HYC 1000 here being used for a prototype car. And at some point they might pivot from HYC 400s to HYC 1000s here in the United States as well. We have not seen that yet. By Andrew Cornelia on Coast to Coast EV, they're expecting for 2,500 stalls by 2027, a mere, uh, what would that be? Uh, two, let's call it two years away with a financial commitment of 1 billion. We're nowhere near that now. And 15 locations every 150 miles on I-5. So that would be that um, coffee cup uh, that we saw with the Starbucks build. And we have seen what that looks like. I'll show that here in a second. Um, beyond Simon Mall, they're going to go near airports also. And apparently in the southeast, the largest farmer's market. We don't know what that one is yet. At least I do not. If you do, please uh, let me know and I'll be sure to cite you as the source of the credit. Um, they highlight what you do while you charge. And I was recently at their Sandy Springs location. It was really enjoyable. And I was in the lounge and there was someone there who it was so nice. It was a hot day. It was also rainy to be able to post up, get out of your car, go into the lounge. And there was actually someone there kind of taking a nap inside while their car charged in the nice air conditioning. Very quiet and peaceful. Um, welcome pricing at 40 cents with taxes and fees tacked on there. Plug and charge is working for Mercedes Benz. The remainder of the vehicles are coming, and we have an echo of the same sentiment from Hakio Schmidt um, as well. So, every indication is that they are going to be ramping up. We got two executives now in order to cite that that's going to be the case. I believe them. Now, let's get into what's new. Uh, Norfolk Premium Outlets, as I showed on the previous slide, is now open near the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. Tampa Premium Outlets has been spotted under construction. This is in the town of Lutz, Florida, near Orlando Lakes and Wesley Chapel. I've been there on many occasions, nice area of the country. And um, Hillsboro, Texas, last we saw, it was just getting trenched, but now we actually have chargers in the ground and it looks like the uh, landscaping is completed and the fencing is down so that one should be opening up pretty soon as well that's the update we have for this time not a lot of new openings but i'm expecting as i said that will be changing mercedes-benz appears to be gearing up for a very large uh, increase in activity in the coming months so definitely stay tuned thanks for watching